Hello and welcome to another edition of Believe TV. My name is Bruce Sampson and I'm your host. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon uh, where or wherever you are in the world and what time it is, because I do know we do have some international uh, friends who tend to tune in. So thank all of you for being here. If this is your first time watching, uh, this is an interactive forum. And so we encourage you guys to go ahead and um, chime in and comment below in uh, the comments field below and say hi at the very least. And if you have any questions or any comments that you want to make, feel free to do that as well. Uh, this program, normally what I do here is um, sometimes it's just me talking to you and other times um, my preferred times is when I have a guest on. Uh, usually it's someone that I find fascinating, someone uh, that I have a great deal of respect for. Uh, oftentimes they're in the entertainment performance world. And uh, many times they're actually friends of mine. I've been very fortunate to have uh, become friends and had lifelong friends with a number of people who have had varying degrees of success in the entertainment field. And I love to uh, just pick their brain and find out more about their story and uh, to take you along on that journey uh, with me. So today is uh, especially exciting for me uh, the lady that I have on today is extremely, extremely talented, uh, award-winning uh, performer, uh, television, film, theater. Um, I actually, by the time I met her, she was already very young, but she had already had a career. <laughs> you know, she'd already begun her career in the arts and had a great deal of success by the time we met. Um, and I'm excited to have her on today. Um, she has, I, I mentioned this last week that I was a child that grew up watching uh, soap operas. Uh, my my mom, uh, especially when I was in kindergarten, I'd only have a half day in kindergarten. And so I, she'd have me uh, sit, make sure that I'd sit down in front of the TV and watch Days of Our Lives. Uh, back then it was The Doctor, Somerset and Another World. So I was all those NBC ones. Uh, and later in life, I gravitated to the young and the restless and guiding light and general hospital and some of the others uh but this young ladies uh some of you i'm saying young because she's she's a baby to me but anyway <laughs> um <laughs> i'm the old man anyway I'm, I'm so excited to have her and i'll stop rambling and all that good stuff to uh welcome to the show uh my good friend miss melissa hayden hey everybody hey, hey. hey there you are how are you? I am good. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. It's my uh, pleasure. Totally my pleasure. It's been a while since we uh, chatted. And <laughs> speaking of awards, I see some behind you, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, those things. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. It's incredible. So let, why don't we start there? Like, what kind of awards do you have up there? Do you mind sharing? Well, I got uh, the one in the middle is the Emmy. I got that for a uh, soap opera. I did a couple of soap operas and this one was actually for Guiding Light. Um, I won that in 1992, so I'm older than dirt. Thank you. <laughs> the one up at the top over there was called, it used to be called Youth in Film. And I don't know what it's called now, but it's got a different name, but it's like, um, I should probably Google it and find out. Um, <laughs> maybe somebody else knows, but it's a um, it's a pretty. Uh, they give awards just to you have to be um, I think under twenty five, and it's only those people get those. And then I have um, over there. I have a golf trophy. Stop. I'm it. a terrible <laughs> golfer. Terrible. <laughs> and I did a one charity event, and I did one like I was teeing off and I hit the ball and it went really close to the pin. I got the closest to the pin out of the women for the day and I got a trophy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and then the one in the middle is the soap opera digest award. So that was from that magazine. Mad magazine. No, from soap opera digest magazine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that's it. That, that, that's plenty. That's, <laughs> that's what awesome. Yeah, that, that's pretty more than I have. So uh, <laughs> I made them up, though. They you made it spoiled. <laughs> well, that works. That works too. Whatever. So, where are you in the world now? 
I'm in Los Angeles. I'm over on the west side, kind of by Venice Beach. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's good. So why don't we uh, go back to the beginning and uh, just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, like where you were born, childhood. So I was born here in LA and um, my dad sold cars and my mom stayed home. Uh, my mom grew up in a tiny little village in England and that's her bird yelling. Awesome. <laughs> um, and so she, and nobody knew anything about show business at all. And I love to dance though. I love dancing. And so I took dance class uh, down the street here at a local studio and they after like six months i'd have to my mom would have to pull me out of class because i was bored i i had learned everything everything and i was like waiting for everyone else to like learn the stuff and then i'd get put back in class and then i you know hurry to catch up and 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 then i was like okay come on everybody so um we did that until i was like maybe eight and then we went, um, my mom was like, you know what, let's look around. And she found another ta uh, tap dance, uh, tap dancing was my thing, tap and jazz, but really tap. Um, she found another studio in Santa Monica that specialized in tap and um, took me in to meet the guy. And it ended up being this guy, Danny Daniels, who was a huge choreographer. He did uh, the choreography for the tap dance kid on Broadway and Xanadu and I mean his resume is insane and I got really really lucky he took me under his wing and took me into class and allowed me to be in class and um yeah so that was sort of my start because um you know being over here on the west side whatever I would have people stop and say hey you know you should come audition for whatever and my or you know to my mom you should get her an agent da, da, da. that bird is driving me crazy <laughs> and um we were always like meh no thanks no thanks um and then Danny had an audition he um got the gig to choreograph the movie pennies from heaven and so he uh, wanted me to audition for it. And because it was Danny, we're like, okay, sounds good. And um, so I went to the audition and they hired 30 kids and I ended up being one of the kids that they hired. And then, um, uh, so I worked on that for a month. And then um, another kid from that audition, from that movie called me like after we had finished it and whatever, and was like, hey, they're auditioning for the movie Annie. You should come audition. I was like, no, I don't want it. No, I don't <laughs> want it. And they're like, oh, well, it'll be a free dance class. And you'll see a bunch of the, our friends from Henning's. And I was like, oh, OK. So I went, and then I got cast in the movie Annie. So that was actually pretty awesome, and I'm really glad that yeah, all right. <laughs> nobody listened to me going, nah, I don't want to. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then it became a thing of, um, you know, a casting director got a hold of my mom and was like, you got to get this kid an agent. You know, she loves it. She really, and, and it became a thing of like, I really wanted to do it. You know, my mom was like, no, I don't want, no, I don't think we should. And I was like, no, I have money in the bank because I've done two movies. And if you don't want to take me, that's okay. I'll hire someone to drive me and take me to auditions, but I want to do it. <laughs> she was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so wait, wait, just for a second. So back up. So how old were you when you did Annie? 13. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. I was wow. one of the oldest kids. There were two of us who were 13. And so we got this sort of featured part as the monitors, as the, you know, the kids with the whistles who chased after the other kids. And it was interesting on Annie because they didn't audition in Los Angeles for the main orphans at all. John huh. Houston had a thing that he thought that the LA kids were too polished and too like, hi, you know, that they couldn't play orphans, that they didn't look enough like real kids. And um, so they went everywhere else and they cast, they, you know, they cast the main orphans and then they came to LA and it turned out the the 30 of us that they hired here 
were great. We were all really great. You know, everyone was really, nobody was too show busy. Nobody was too stuck up. And we ended up doing Annie for three months. I was working on Annie five days a week. Um, yeah. And we were working, it was like summer camp. We worked the entire summer and it was just fantastic. It was really, really great. And where did you shoot that? A Burbank Studios. Burbank. Okay. Yeah. Which is now Warner. It's called Warner Brothers now. Yeah. And it's weird because the, um, the soundstage that we shot Annie on, I, uh, just recently I did a, um, I was uh, the dialogue coach for young Sheldon and um, and I went and I showed up and I'm like, Oh my, we were on the Annie soundstage. Oh, stop it. That's so cool. I know. That's I was so like, ah! Okay. Wait, so I didn't know that part. So it was, was that a one-time thing or, or, or is that an ongoing thing for you? Young Sheldon? Oh, I, I did the uh, three episodes, I think. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But it was good. It was great. And I do some of that on set coaching now. So wow. it's fun, but it's hard. It's a lot of work. And I'm like, really, I could stay home and make more money. Thanks. <laughs> well, okay. So this is, so I love doing these interviews, especially with friends because I, I usually come into it thinking, Oh yeah, I know about their career. I, I I know you know their lives and stuff. And then, but I don't really talk about it, so you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, I I have no clue. So like, I assumed. Um, I think I just assumed from the very beginning that um, that probably as a kid, your mo your mom pushed you into into performing and stuff. My mom was like, "No, I don't want to. No, no." Oh, funny, funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she, no, like, she has such a, a bright, beautiful personality and everything. And so I thought, oh, well, that's where it comes from. Clearly, that's where it comes from. <laughs> and that's funny to find out that not at all, right? <laughs> not at all. And it was, I mean, it was sort of odd because the first movie was definitely just because it was my teacher. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And and he said, I can't guarantee that you're going to get cast um, just because you're my student. But But because it was him we both felt really comfortable about ah, let's do it. You know what I mean? But it, it still wasn't showbiz, you know, I wasn't running around on auditions and doing random commercials and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so was it after Annie that you uh, got an agent or did you sign with someone or? It was either after Annie or it was during Annie. So uh, this is a weird little thing. So my friend, Tammy, lived in San Diego and her sister, um, anyway, so when they, they were working on pennies too. And so they would sort of stay with us while we were working rather than them having to keep driving back and forth to San Diego. And we were having lunch one day in the commissary and it was, for some reason, it was like a special day and me and Tammy and her little sister, Heather, got to sit at her own table. And then the moms were at a different table, which was a big deal. And so we're having our lunch and then this guy keeps staring at Tammy's little sister, Heather. And it was like, and this is in the commissary at MGM, right? So everyone's vetted to get onto the lot. There's security guards all around, but this guy is creepy. And this bushy hair and a big bushy beard. And it was just all very unkempt and like, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And I was getting mad. And um, then he came over and he started talking to Heather. Meanwhile, Heather was five, okay? And I was like, Tammy, go get your mom. And I was like trying to get big and, mm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all, mm. and, um, and he's talking to her and stuff. And then Tammy's mom comes over and talks, and I don't know what was said. And he handed her a card and, um, Tammy's mom seemed to be okay with it. And then he went away and it was like, okay, whatever. And she goes, oh, that was some guy and he wants um, to see Heather in his office to audition for a movie or something. And we're like, oh, okay. But why didn't he just say that? Why did he have to be all creepy, right? Yeah, yeah. Two, it was Steven Spielberg. Stop. <laughs> yeah. And he cast her in Poltergeist. She was the little blonde. 
They're here. That was her. Are you kidding me? Nope. I've so never while we were doing, so she got that job while we were doing Pennies from Heaven. So while Tammy and I, her sister and I were shooting Annie in Burbank, Heather was shooting Poltergeist in Culver City. So Tammy was with us. My mom was Tammy's guardian on all of that long story to say. Tammy was my mom's um, ward while we were on set in Burbank. And she got a commercial audition for Dr. Pepper, I think it was. It was. Okay. So, I know. So, um, we after work we went over took tammy to her audition and then the cast director goes well what about you do you dance why don't you come in and audition i was like okay so i went in and auditioned and we both got the job so um that was the casting director who said who called my mom and talked to my mom for like two hours and convinced her to let me get an agent and wow. then she called agents and said i'm sending you this kid sign her so so, okay, so tell me this. So, like, in your mind at that point, do you re do you recall, was there a flip from that love of dancing to, like, oh, I like this, you know, like, I want to do this instead, or was... Yeah, because, you know, what happened is when I was doing Annie, um, because I wasn't a dancer, I was a monitor, right? I had that little featured role. Um I didn't have as many rehearsals. There were only like a few places that they needed me to rehearse because I actually ended up not really dancing in the movie. Um, so I had a lot of free time. And because it was during the summer, we didn't have to go to school. So cool. what I would do is whenever they were filming on the set, uh, within our soundstage, we had, they had built the entire orphanage. Wow. And the front door and the front walk and the street and all that stuff. So, um, and it's really interesting how they do that because they build the first floor here and then next to it, they build the second floor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it, so anyway, we had these sets and whatever. And while they were filming on orphanage sets, whatever the hot set was, I'd go sneak onto the hot set and I wasn't supposed to, but I did. And, I was really quiet and I was very polite and I was very, you know, whatever. And um, I would stand like right here to John Houston because, oh, actually, here, let me show you. So that's John Houston, this old guy right here. Yeah. And that's the one who played Annie. Oh, that's me. This, uh, this um, photograph actually ended up in Time Magazine. Oh, and see this girl here? Yeah. Do you see her? So that's Michelle Elkin. And when I was doing that episode of Young Sheldon, they brought her in as the choreographer. <laughs> that's incredible. That's incredible. And had, yeah. had you seen her in all that time? No. Oh, no. You know what I had? I had seen her in some dance classes and I had seen her at like friends parties and whatnot, you know? Um, yeah really crazy anyway so i would go sneak onto the hot set and i would stand behind john houston and i would because he had the monitor so that's how you could see what was happening on set right and okay. sometimes the monitor was like in the next room and sometimes it was down the hall sometimes it was in the same room but that was always the best view so that's where i hung out and i stood there and i would stand there for like four hours i'm not making a pee just standing i was <laughs> that's when i fell in love with the whole thing I was madly in love with it. And you know what I wanted to be is I wanted to be the continuity person. I wanted to have the book and keep track of everything because they would say things like, you know, Carol Burnett would be like, what hand did I pick up my glass with? And I'd go left. And it was right. Oh. because I knew that it was the correct hand, you know? Um, the other thing that happened during those days when I was standing there on set like that is, um, John Houston was an incredible director, an incredible director who really trusted everybody he cast and his crew, you know, and he was just such a beautiful man. And it taught me so much about this business, about like someone who's got a real ego as far as like, 
I know what I'm doing. And that that's great to have a healthy ego like that, right? But also someone who's able, has a healthy enough ego themselves that they're able to say, what do you think? Hmm. hmm. I don't know. Let's see. What do you think? Right. He yeah. turned to me and he goes, what do you think, baby? And I was like, uh, I think if that man just said that to me, I wouldn't stick around. I think I'd walk away. And he goes, Carol, dear, will you try something for me? And suggested it to her. And it's in the film, you know, because he wasn't afraid to like take a suggestion from a human, you know, so. Right. I've worked with other directors who have been threatened or who have been, um, you know, feel like they have to be in charge and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you do have to keep a, a hold of the set for sure, but right. there's no threat in every, everyone having a say or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is so fascinating. And <laughs> Was there ever a point, I mean, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but okay. was there ever a point where the love of dance returned or did you ever lose it? Like, like, did you continue dancing no matter what or? Well, what happened is I was, uh, we had this little group of friends from the two movies, right? Who, and we would meet each other at all the same classes all over town. And our poor parents would be like driving an hour this direction, an hour that direction on each different night to get us to the best class and the best teachers and the best like teachers who were also working choreographers. You know what I mean? So um, we got really lucky because mom and I weren't really driven like that. But some of those other people that we really liked them as people were driven like that and because i danced on the same level as their daughters that was just it became this thing that we did right and um and then it so we were doing all this and it became a thing of i was dancing like five or six hours a day on saturdays and you know three hours on sundays and then three hours every day after school and and the hour drive each way and then trying to do homework and um, which now is like way more common. There's a lot more people hitting it hard like that, you know, but back in the day, it was like, I go once a week, you know, there was yeah, a lot yeah. of that. So um, <laughs> anyway, so I was uh, dancing like that when I was 15 and I blew my knee out. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I was benched and it became a, a long recovery process. And then I started spraining my ankles um, while I was still healing from the knee. And then I ended up spraining ankles like 28 times because they never really healed. Sprains are worse than breaks. So it became a thing of I was never able to get my legs under me again. Wow. And, I, and so it was actually after that injury that I met you about a year after that injury. Wow. So, okay. So, yeah, so, so tell me about that. Tell me about that introduction into YAs and that. So I was um, in high school in Santa Monica and he got the choir director there, got a letter and said, and the letter said, you know, we're the young Americans. We're looking for your best boy and your best girl. Please send them to us. So, um, they can audition for a group and we will never interfere with any of your school activities. We'll never, you know, there's a big promise about that. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you never saw me again in high school, practically. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, and my choir director sent me, I wasn't the best. Um, there were other kids at my school who were much better singers than me. I could singish i can carry two you know but there are good singers out there and um and he said but they wanted all around people you know people who could dance and sing and act and whatever and so he was like okay melissa you're right go ahead you know anyway that's how i got to americans and um they almost kicked me out on my first day that was good oh please 
tell. <laughs> so I get an American audition to the first audition with my picture and resume, as you do, because it's an audition, right? So you show <laughs> and um and everyone's like, check out this chick with the resume and the what? Who's doing this? You know what I mean? It was like Yeah, yeah. Crazy. And I'm like in Brea which is you know forever away from here it's some building that looked like a prison and it was so odd and um but i showed up with my picture resume because that's what she did. so anyway um and i'm going through the auditions and you know they did, made me sing made me dance whatever and that was all fine and then um got down and whittled down the groups anyway i got in and then they said okay well we'll see you on saturday for the first meeting and we did the first meeting of the group and it was like totally exciting for me. You know, I had never been in a group like that. Well, I had on Annie and Petty's Raven and with the girls that I danced with, you know what I mean? Right. I had never been in a group like that where everybody was so excited and enthusiastic and like kind and, and talented, really talented, you know? And it was, it was exciting. And plus for me, I was 15. And so there were kids up to like 21 years old. And so for me, that was like, wow, you know, because in a lot of ways, with, especially with dancing, I had hit the ceiling here where um, my little group, we would go to any dance audition, even if it was an adults only dance audition, we'd show up and we would always be right at the end. We would always be some of the best dancers there. And um, and then it was always like, uh, well, you're too short or we can't have anyone under 18 or whatever. So anyway, I go to the first meeting of Young Americans and uh, this is a really long story, sorry about this. No, please, please, I'm, I'm um, loving it. <laughs> and, uh, we finished the first, you know, and everyone's excited and people are singing and I'm impressed. And um, But it's in like some little building in a park somewhere in Orange County and I'm like, Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Bill said, Bill Brawley says, uh, Melissa Hayden, we would like to speak with you, please come take a walk with us. And so Milton and Bill and I went and took a walk to the corner and my parents are like sitting in the car looking, going, what, is, what's happening? Yeah. And, um, they say to me, you know, we really don't think this is a group for you. Oh, wow. Okay. We don't pay. Um, there's no, you know, special treatment. You have to, um, you know, people here uh, move their own mics and pack their own trunks and um, have to wash and clean their own costumes. And um, it's not at all what you're used to. And we don't think we're for you. And I went... Okay, why don't you watch me for six months? And wow. I was like, then we'll see. And they're like, okay, fair enough. And I was, from that day on, I was the first to arrive. I was the last to leave. I was always packing a truck or carrying a mic or like I was, and it was so yeah. funny because, because of they laid down that gauntlet right at the beginning it became a thing of even till I was like 20, 21, like way beyond when I should have been there. I was still like, no, I got to show them. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 <laughs> that's anyway. amazing. I, yeah. th that's shocking to me to know that you had that within you to say, no, I'm not leaving because I, I think had that been me, mm -hmm. I would have been like, okay you know, and <laughs> tuck my tail and walked away, you know? Right. Well, I think that the difference, I don't think the difference in that is that I'm a better person than you or that I have more confidence than you. I think that I was coming off a couple year run of getting every job I auditioned for and working a lot. And um, I just had that sort of self-esteem happening. And it wasn't like by my own merit. It was just because of circumstances. Interesting. Just yeah. I mean, 
Kind of, yeah. And I also knew some of those kids who were snotty showbiz kids. Mm, I'm sure. Who wouldn't put up with any of that stuff. And I was like, oh, I know who you think I am. And I'm not that. That's not me. That's not who I am. So right. watch me. How funny. Okay, so, so just as a side note, what's funny. kind of funny is that um, I don't know if it was my introduction to you or if I met you and then uh, Bill or Milt, whoever it was, said it to me. I, I remember them pointing out that you had that you'd already been doing films and stuff. Um, and so that's funny to me that they're like, yeah, this probably isn't for you. But but on the side, they're like, look who we got, you know, like, <laughs> you know, at the same time. So that's kind of funny. That's kind of cool. That's that's wild. Yeah, no, they'd never let on to me anything about that. <laughs> and so, in fact, whenever they had auditions for anything, especially some of the like, you know, the NBC special or whatever, um, it was always pretty funny because I'd be auditioning going, OK, well, I hope I get it. You know, I really hope I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so that's what I was going to ask you next. Like, so what projects did you do with YAs? Oh, well, I did. Well, as you know, we did that dinner theater down in Newport Beach. That was, oh my God, I don't know what the hell I was thinking doing that job. I was 16. I was, driving, I was going to summer school. I was taking extra credits in summer school. And, um, and then I would drive down to Newport Beach and I would do two shows, serving dinner to 100 people twice, you know, right. when we do show nights. And then, um, or once, whatever, and then I, I would drive myself back at midnight or whatever, do my home, then get up and go to school again the next day, um, for months on end. It was, I, I don't, I don't know what anybody was thinking. Wow. <laughs> so okay, well, well, riddle me this. So at what point did your mom switch from, or or did she ever switch from? the I don't want my daughter to do this to like, does she ever go to I'm all in or, or was it always like, okay, this is what you want. I'll support you and I'll just go for the ride with you. It was, it was pretty much that. I mean, it was an interesting thing of, she got on board about driving me obviously to my dance classes and, and to young Americans in the early days before I got my driver's license. Um, and I think it was when we found that nice group of friends mm -hmm. um, and, and the really lovely teachers. And that was when it, I think she got a little more on board about it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. If that makes sense. I mean, I was really. <sighs> <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So. I, I, that's, it still kind of blows me away, though, that, again, that you had that success already, that it felt like you were, um, at least in my mind, from yeah. this vantage point, it feels like a, um, a trajectory, you know, a path, you know, was in front of you. And then you then said, yeah, but I also want to be part of this group, this Young Americans thing. I want to experience that. Whereas... I think most of us who joined the group, especially back in those days, um, that that was more of, well, this is a stepping stone or a launching point to get me to, to the path you were already on. Right, right. You know what I'm so that's just so curious to me, like, I yeah, your well, thought process it was the hardest decision I ever made, you know, um, but I was 15. And yeah. um, it wasn't a terrible decision, you know, but yeah, as a career move, it was not a good career move at all. Um, but what happened was I ended up, I ended up never going to college because I, I mean, come on, I had already been working. I knew what I wanted to do. And at that time you didn't need a college degree to get a lot of really good paying jobs. And, you know, it's so different now. I really think everybody should go to college and get a degree and, you know, that's, it's a necessity. It's the bare minimum you need if you want something other than 
to work a minimum wage job where you, you know, hurt your back because you have to lift things um, or you have to stand all day. So um, the Young Americans for me actually became my college. That became my sorority sisters. That became my, you know, uh, I mean, and like you said, it's, you know, it's, it's a bunch of lifelong friends, you know, it's, um, you guys are my family. So I wouldn't change it. You know, I wouldn't change it at all. Yeah. I've, I've had a couple of, a couple of times in my career where it's, I could have gone this way or I could have gone that way, you know, and I've chosen the way of, uh, a better human experience, a better human life rather than a better career. You know, yeah. um, there, there really were a couple of twists and turns that are very clear that if I had chosen that way instead, it, it would, things would probably be different now, you know, but right. how many well, zeros in the bank? You know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, when you have enough, you have enough and who, you know, you want more for what and how much is, that? and the thing about it that is too, is you, for me, it's like, well, how much is that going to cost? Really? Mm, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So then I go to Bosnia for six months to work on that. No, thanks. Uh, yeah. You know? Well, so another area where I think that kind of, you know, reveals itself is, or, or that thinking anyway, um, and, and feel free to tell me if I'm wrong, if I'm missing the point here, but like, so the, the other thing that I talked about, um, uh, when, you, you know, when I was doing the show a few, mm -hmm. last week or a few weeks ago and, um, and your name came up was, um, auditioning for game shows or for, you, you know, whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm like, yeah, like as, as someone who's, again, had already done stuff, right? You're, you, I mean, your first job, you worked with Josh. They knew I was doing that. Oh, they would have killed me if they knew. <laughs> Death. It was a fun adventure with my friends. You know, that's all that was. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I remember that whole thing too, because like, I think I was a tagger along because I think you guys had already decided that you were doing this thing. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I just like showed up and you're like, yeah, we're doing this thing. I'm like, oh, that sounds like fun. Can I go? You know, like <laughs> in case people didn't see the other episode. So what happened was uh, two of our friends had decided that they wanted to go on. Was Win it Lose Lose or Raw? Raw? Yeah. Was this game? They wanted to audition for it and they figured out like where the audition was and what time you had to get there and they signed up and they did all this stuff and then bruce and i were like yeah we'll go <laughs> <laughs> that was hysterical that and was i ended up winning twelve hundred dollars so yay and okay so tell me this do you recall who your celebrities were no no idea no idea. <laughs> i the only that ones Someone once showed me a clip of the show, and I still don't remember who they were. <laughs> oh, how funny. How funny. Yeah. <laughs> I know, um, I want to say, like I told you the whole thing about I got invited back three times and never got on the show, right? So um, I know one of the times it was Richard Simmons, like he yeah. was one of them, because I remember, like, you know, like when you had the lunch break, they... Um, I guess it just depends on when you shot, right? But if but if you were there the whole day, like I was all three times, you'd have your lunch break and then they would separate you from the celebrities by this big curtain partition thing. Right. And we'd, you know, we'd eat or whatever. And I remember them making a big deal of you don't interact with the celebrities, you leave them alone and that whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. and I remember all of a sudden peeking out of the curtain was Richard Simmons going, hi guys, and he like jumps out. And we're like all like frozen, like, do not make eye contact. Do not make <laughs> eye contact. <laughs> but it's like, how do you not, right? <laughs> no, no, I think that's just a thing. It's just a courtesy thing to like let people have their downtime, you know? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, um, it's a long, grueling day for them. 
Yeah, but I don't remember any of the other celebrities except I remember Richard Simmons because of that. And then I remember um, the very last time I went, the celebrities were the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation. And I thought, this is it. This is this is my this is my thing. Here we go. I've been waiting for this all my life. I've been doing this Mr. Spock thing my whole life. And <laughs> it's all for this moment. And I still didn't get on. <laughs> Oh, but you got so a story out of it, so who cares? It's yeah, like, yeah, right. <laughs> you don't need that extra zero in your bank. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, okay, so, so then tell me. Um, okay, I so did I family feud. Wait, say that again. I did Family Feud. <laughs> Wait, seriously? When I was on the soap, they had a charity week. And so we would do, um, they had, you know, the Young and the Restless versus Scotty Light or whatever. Yeah. And I came out and we shot, you know, we shot a week's worth of shows or I don't remember, three days, two days, three days, something like that. Oh my God, that was so much fun. <laughs> now, are, are you competitive? Because I think you are, <laughs> if I remember correctly. <laughs> I either am or I'm not. You know what I mean? Like there, there are certain things that like, sometimes when people get competitive about stuff, I'm like, not for me. Thanks. You know what yeah. I mean? Something yeah. like a game. I'm like, oh yeah, come on. Yeah. Just yeah. paper and stuff. Mm. <laughs> I'm all about it and don't waste my time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. So, so talk to me about the transition of the introduction of uh, soaps into your life. So it was just another audition. And uh, I went on this audition and it was for a soap in New York. And, you know, and at that point, um, I think I was 20, maybe 21. And I was auditioning for stuff and I was getting some stuff and I wasn't getting other things. And, you know, I was right on the cusp of breaking. So it would get down to me and two other people for the lead in a movie and someone else would get it because their resume was a little thicker than mine, you know, or they had a better agent or now it would be, they had more social media followers. You know what I mean? Those sorts of things were going on. Um, right. So I was just about to break. And then this audition came up for a soap in New York. And my manager was like, I think you should, she, my manager came from New York and um, her father had been an actor his whole life. And she's like, this is a good job. This is a good job. Like, People could put their kids through college on the money they make on a soap. This is a good job. It's great training ground. Um, you got a lot of experience. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I went and auditioned and um, and that was fine. And then they uh, called me back and that was fine. And then they wanted me to fly out to New York and do a uh, screen test. And so I went, <laughs> okay. So I went to do the screen test and it was fine. You know, I mean, I had, I had some tricks up my sleeve, like, um, you know, to try to fall asleep before I, before it was my turn so that I'd be a little more relaxed and I wouldn't be such a nervous wreck and to know my lines like two days ahead of time so that I wouldn't be at all worried about what my words were and stuff like that. So, um, get to New York and going for my screen test and, um, we, we block it and, and then we go into tape and it's me and four of the girls and um and the guy we're working with is like super cute but kind of you know what i mean like he just wasn't really i don't know that day he like wasn't really there for us he ended up being a fantastic guy i mean fantastic but that day and i was like and i think i said something to him like can you at least like give me something back because come on dude i'm trying to get the job you know and um anyway, so we all blocked it and then i came back in and then we all taped right and so i taped my scene with him and it was this guy was going to be this character's love interest and um so it was the scene of blah 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 whatever and then flirty looks flirty looks i turned to go right so we do the scene it's fine everything's fine uh, flirty looks, flirty looks. I turned to go and I wa I misjudged where the door was and I walked right into the wall and I hit my head on the wall. I went, bam! <laughs> and 
bam. And I looked and I went, <laughs> and I just busted out laughing. And then I was like, like this or something to him, like it's hot. And then I leave, right? And um, the casting director who was like, one of the most incredible women I've met in this business. Incredible, Betty Ray. And she uh, she said to me, you know, Melissa, after I got the job, she said, you know what? We all knew that you had the job after you hit your head and laughed. How funny. How funny. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's just interesting because I had just had time on set. I knew that being on set, if I made a mistake, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it's sometimes a huge advantage if a mistake happens because if you're able to save the take they go oh okay she knows what she's doing right okay. right okay she's not just like only thinking about herself all the time like she's aware of what's going on around her and able to help things out and fix them you know yeah. So that became, you know, and then I worked on that job for six years. And there again, I stayed three years longer than I should have. I signed a three-year contract and then I should have walked. Um, but I liked everybody and I stay and it was fun. And, you know, so I stayed. And that was another like, mm, if I had been smarter about my career, I would have made a different decision, you know. That, I find that so interesting. So, um, so who who was uh, who was the character that you did you play the same character for three I years? Bridget in. I'm sorry. Say it one more time. I didn't... Bridget reared in on Guiding Light. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I had you know what I totally skipped over, but I had already uh, done a, a contract job uh, on General Hospital here in town. And I was playing this character, Mouse. Um, and it, I had signed a three-year contract. But then, right? <laughs> but then they, uh, after six months, they ran out of a story for me. And they had aged me, even though I was 20 or 21, something like that. Uh, they had made me a 13 or 14-year-old, I think. And they didn't have any other cast in that age, in that age group. So they didn't have anywhere to plug me in. They could have had someone adopt me, but there wasn't really story for me. And there weren't like other teenagers for me to get in trouble with. I was too young for the whole, like, I'm dating, I'm driving, I'm doing all that. You know what I mean? It was just, uh, they didn't really think ahead well with that. Um, so they let me go. And they let me go. This, they told me they let me go the same day I had a fourth callback for a really good job. Uh -huh. And I... And I blew that job. I blew that fourth call back because I was so upset about being let go. You know, and actually, oh. actually, I mean, I wish I could go and like be with that, you know, young me who didn't understand that they were doing me a huge favor, not making me sit around for another two and a half years on that contract. Yeah. But they go to do some other stuff, you know, they were doing me a huge favor. But I took it as a rejection. So. so anyway, so when the guiding light thing came up and I walked into the wall, it was like, I know what to do with that. You know, and I, I had already like run into the set on General Hospital and fallen on my ass. So, you know, <laughs> they gave me these shoes that had no tread on them at all. And then linoleum and then they'd wet down the linoleum and I just kept falling. It was the stupid. <laughs> well, I wonder how much of um the situation of being let go from guiding or from general hospital mm -hmm. informed um you quote unquote staying too long with guiding light um hmm. or did it not <laughs> you know <laughs> uh it may have i mean uh, i was certainly like i i had on my radar that there were people on guide i mean Bruce, you have to understand the human beings in the building at Guiding Light were phenomenal. Hmm. 
those actors, directors, producers, like some of those people are still my favorite people. It was like I had found another Young Americans. Yeah, yeah. You know? And um, and those people were raising their kids and putting them through college on their guiding light salary. And then they were going and doing Broadway at night or going and doing a film once in a while, you know? Um, they weren't always great about letting you out of your contract to go do stuff. I know um, I was working with Nia Long and she had a lot of trouble with that. She, um, they were not kind to her as far as letting her out. She had just done Boys in the Hood and then she took Guiding Light before Boys in the Hood was released, I think, or before Coming to America. No, not Coming to America. Some other movie she did with Whoopi Goldberg and Ted Danson. Anyway, and then it was released and it was a hit and oh, yeah. and she was like, okay, I've got these other movie offers and they're like, no, we have you under contract. And then oh, they wow. didn't use it, which was awful. Awful. Wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think my decision had more of staying for the next three years with Guiding Light had more to do with that. I, I loved those people so much. Yeah. You know, well, that's, I mean, there are worse things, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But there again, you know, I chose the, um, what makes me happy as a human being for my life mm -hmm. over what's a smart career move, you know? And I do think, you know, I do think that part of my choosing that over and over again um, has to do with that I grew up in here in LA. You know, it's, it's, I'm, it's like, this is my factory town. That's my, the industry is my factory. You know, I got in early, I was six, successful early. Um, so it never seemed not possible. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's kind of deep. Yeah. That's cool. Um, okay. So, so, so tell me, um, Aside from the soap world, and, and were those were those were those the only two that you worked on, or did or were you on other? I worked. I did uh, like I don't know a couple of episodes of Young and the Restless just maybe ten years ago. Do you know it's like one fifty four already? We're almost out of time. Y yeah, I, it's crazy. Yeah, and I'm still like twenty years old in my stories. So. <laughs> in your story, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's so fascinating though i'm learning so much you know forget the audience it's what i what i want right now <laughs> i don't have to wear till three so i'm fine so whatever okay. <laughs> um oh, that's a friend of mine from atlanta great show outstanding guests taking us behind the scenes in hollywood yeah this is fascinating to, to me yeah i'm learning a lot so um and I think one of the things that I have now is, and I've had it for so many years, is thousands and thousands and thousands of hours on set. Mm. There, you can't buy that. You can't get that anywhere. You know, it's it's. Uh, I'm super lucky for that. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Anyway, have you, sorry. have you ever explored? So going way back. Sorry, <laughs> instead of moving forward, I'm moving backward now. Oh, but. Sorry. Um, so you mentioned the thing about being over John Houston's shoulder and uh, that if you could have any job, it would have been continuity, right? So. Yeah. Which is, I think it's called script supervisor now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you ever actively pursue that or any no. level? No. no. Um, I did when I was in elementary school, uh, the they wanted to put on a show and i was like oh i can do that and they're like what and i'm like i was in seventh or eighth grade i'm like yeah i can do that don't worry about it okay just give me a couple rehearsals with everybody and i got the entire school up and i taught them a little dance routine to finish off the show and you know whatever they were like how do you know how to do that i'm like i don't know i just did that. and um and then uh Later on in high school, we had a um, uh, our choreographer and our director of our musical. I think we were doing Grease. Were um, they were on a softball team together, and they ran into each other like head first, and both ended up in the hospital. 
And so I took over directing and choreographing the show. I think I was a freshman or a sophomore. <laughs> um, Incredible. You know what I mean? So I've had that sort of like, yeah, I can do it. Why not? Um, yeah. Yeah. And so in these, like in the later years, I've been, you know, associate producing and writing and doing a little directing and, you know, and it's funny because people have always told me that that's the kind of stuff I should be doing, you know? And so I think in a lot of ways, it's a blessing that I have chosen human paths because it gives me more room and scope to be able to do that stuff that I really enjoy, you know? I don't always enjoy being on set and like, I'll have a suggestion on like how to make the script a little better or how to work the scene a little bit or what angle might work a little bit. And, you know, some people don't want to hear it and that's fine because, you know, that's not what I was hired for. So I'll shut up. But, um, you know, if it'd be a little more like John Houston, maybe. Awesome. Oh, right. right. You're um, a new John Houston. <laughs> funny. I was in a class one time and, and the directors were all talking about like, well, when is it okay to take suggestions from other people? And, and would you ever take a suggestion from, so, and, and wouldn't that make the rest of the crew look down on you? Like, you know, like you're not able to manage your own, your own set or that you're, you're not capable, you don't have good ideas yourself. And then they opened it up to the room and the different directors were saying what, and the different directors were like the guy who created MASH, the guy who uh, directed Pretty in Pink, uh, the guy who directed, you know what I mean? Like not like incredible directors. And then I was like, actually, and they're like, what do you have to say? You know, and I'm like, actually a little story about John Houston and the 13 year old girl. And they were like, oh, Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell me, um, so tell me more about in the next three minutes, can you fit in? <laughs> I probably can go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, your, tell me about like kind of what, what has transpired since then the, the teaching, the coaching and, and so, other. Aspects. Yeah. So after I got off, Guiding Light, I uh, was not willing to um, be that much at someone else's mercy. Um, and I made a decision, once again, better human life experience rather than better career, you know? And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really picky. I'm only gonna take the things I wanna take and I'm gonna pass on pretty much everything. And, um, and so I had a long dry spell, self-imposed dry spell. And then the few jobs that I went for, they were like, mm, why have you had such a dry spell? There's something going on here. We're not interested. Mm. <laughs> so it became a thing, right? And that's also something to pay attention to because, um, you know, they can tell what's going on with us. They can tell when we have a bad attitude or when we're, not exactly on board about something, you know, it's, it's pretty easy. If you're ever on the other side of the table and you even have 10 people walk in, you can totally tell what's up with all of them. Right. Who's into it, who's not into it, who has confidence, who doesn't, who's doesn't want to be told what to do and who is fine and feels collaborative about it, you know? Yep. So, and what I ended up doing was I, and I had a little chunk of change and I had, I was okay, you know, and I went and I started volunteering with special ed kids and doing art and music with special ed kids. And I ended up doing that for 10 years. Um, and then that took me into when that job ended, then I actually needed to get a job, like a pay the rent job and mortgage. And, um, where I was taking acting, they were like, well, do you want to start a program here? And I was like, uh, yeah, let's do it. So I did that and um, I'm still doing that. And that's at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. And um, and now I've, I've branched out more, uh, doing a lot of more private coaching and, you know, shooting projects and getting funding for films and, you know, that sort of stuff, so. Wow. Huh. That's incredible. Yeah. Which is great. I love that sort of like 
I get to bring something to the table rather than just be like, okay, am I pretty? Where do I stand? (laughs) (laughs) Um, We have a friend here, uh, Jody York, who's a fellow YA alum. (laughs) She says, I worked with her on a show. She was choreographing at a synagogue. She was an extremely creative choreographer and realized many years later, she was only around 16 years old. I remember that. It's true. I was 16. I was working with, um, I had gone to Catholic school my whole life, and I was working with a Jewish youth group. Um, I was doing their choreography. That's hilarious. Oh my God, Jody. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're technically over time, but um, I do just want to ask like, is, is there anything else that you would like to share, especially given that you, um, you are a teacher, you know, as well as um, veteran performer and all, and all the accomplishments. I would say whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, right. You have a story. Someone around you has a story. That's a valuable story. Hmm. You know, in your imagination somewhere, or you read a book once and then you had a twist on it. Right. They are clamoring, dying for good original material you know we're we're seeing a lot of remakes if you went through the pilot season this year you would see just how many are remakes um a because it's a proven commodity so it's easy to plug new people into and you've already got a a audience established but um b there's you know new material is unproven and questionable and you know um but the thing about it is like we all have some good stories i think every single person in the world has at least one fantastic story (laughs) you know and 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 i think everybody can write and if you can't actually you know do paragraphs and or set it up in final draft and the the, the, the script format whatever nobody cares write some notes, get a ghostwriter, get someone to help you write it, get someone to help you format it. Um, Self-publish your book. People are buying those. People are optioning those. Friend of mine got it was written in, I don't know, in like the early seventies, probably she got a book and she optioned it and uh, put together a deal with her as a producer and attached as a star. And, shopped it around she's been shopping it around for a few years she got a deal on it so now wow. it's development wow yeah yeah there's nothing special about the people who are actually in show business except that they've done it already and they all had a day when they hadn't done it already yeah yeah well it's so kind just, of- you know, some of your ducks in a row and then you know hopefully you'll have there'll be an opportunity for you and you'll be like oh i do have an idea i have a story here's the thing you know well, well let me ask you this so yeah. i i focus the question um more towards you know kids young people whatever mm-hmm. but um would you say the same is true for i, I mean you, you kind of just gave me an example but to some degree but uh, would you say the same is true for like for older folks, because um, absolutely, it really doesn't matter. Like, right? Absolutely. No, everybody has a voice. Everybody's got an opinion. Everyone's got a point of view. Everybody's got a story. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody has the courage or the follow through or whatever that thing is that it takes to get it onto paper and get it to somebody else. You know. So there's hope for me yet. Okay, I'm glad. Thank you. you. <laughs> you know, and for younger people, like they need YA authors. Adults, you know, Bruce and I can't fake that we have the perspective of an 11 year old. We don't. So if you're 11 and you have a perspective and you have an idea for a story, write your story. Get it to yeah. somebody. Don't stop talking about your story. That's beautiful. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for doing this. I I could totally go on for hours. <laughs> and I have so many more questions. So 
maybe you'll be kind enough to come back another time and like, sure. fill in some of those blanks. <laughs> I'm happy to. It's fine. Well, say hi to mom for me. I will. And take you give care. Give all your kisses for me, okay? Will do. Will do. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. 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 <laughs> So thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching the show. If you're watching this on replay, which I know a lot of you will, uh, feel free to leave comments as well. And I'll be happy to uh, respond to those. And maybe even Melissa might be willing to answer any questions as well. So uh, tune in again next week. Actually, I did want to let you all know something. So uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving. And so I'm actually planning to do a special show that day. So it'll just be a solo show. But anyone who wants to pop in and say hi, um, I might even do a thing where I'll, if you say you want to come on screen with me, I'll shoot you a link and let you join me uh, for a little bit. But it's just going to be a kind of a day for me to just say um, thanks to a lot of people and, and thanks for a lot of it experiences and stuff because it also happens to be my birthday so yes i am a turkey baby so um at least this year <laughs> so uh, i hope that um after you've had some turkey and watched some football and stuff you might want to tune in later and and uh, see what old bruce has to say here at believe tv again thank you guys so much for tuning in it's been a blast for me and we will see you all uh next time peace